So you're doing a reading and four aces show up. This symbolizes opportunity. When three shows up, this symbolizes good news. With two though, it symbolizes trickery. Quick witch tip, do you have nightmares? If you have some star anise, grab. I like to do things in three. So three, six, nine star anise. Place them in a little bag and underneath your pillow. No more nightmares. Try it out. Tarot tip. Find the empress in your deck. The card behind her will tell you what you need to do in order to nurture and care for yourself. This depends on the specifics of the card, but generally if you ask your deck a yes or no question and you get a wands, it's yes, but you have to put action towards it to get what you want. Cups is yes, but good things take time. Pentacles is yes, but things come with a price. And swords is just no. And then major arcana cards are like, lol, good luck. When four eights show up in reverse, this represents error. When three eights show up, this means you are causing a spectacle. And two eights in reverse means a misfortune. Let's talk about the witch ball, what it is, and where it comes from. The witch ball originates from 18th century England. They were hung in windows to ward off evil spirits, witches, and evil spells. Originally, the witch ball would be made out of colorful, blown glass. It is said that once evil spirits saw the witch ball, that they would be memorized by the colors inside and become trapped. Today, witch balls are still used for warding and protection. Little tarot tip, so swords and wands are fire and air, those are masculine energies. Pentacles and uh, cups are feminine energies, so that means one is more passive where one is more active. So if you're pulling cards like the lovers reverse the moon or the three of swords and they're surrounded by passive cards, it's it's probably you that's doing the betraying or the manipulating um if it's by active cards like wands and swords it's probably somebody around you who's betraying you or hiding some sort of secret from you so know that you know if you get this card it could be you who's being the little bitch not other people around you hi please make sure you're taking the time to cleanse your deck between each reading it's really just as simple as lighting an incense stick and not really thinking about anything and getting rid of all of the energy. Tarot tip! If a situation isn't going your way, find the Wheel of Fortune card in your deck. The two cards on each side are the solution to your problem. If you have to hide your practice for any reason, you'd be called a broom closet witch and you're super valid, so let's show some tips. My favorite hidden magic method is to charm or enchant your jewelry. Chaotic Witch Aunt has a great video on how to do this on their YouTube channel. It's basically the process of making your regular jewelry into something a little more spicy, magically speaking. This piece is charmed, you have no idea. You can also do candle magic with literally any kind of candle. It doesn't have to be a fancy spell candle. Some of these have been used for magical purposes. Some of them just smell good and you'll never know. You can also do veiling and just say that it's a fashion statement. Add specific essential oils or moon water to a diffuser. Keep sleep spell items by your bed. If you can't have a big altar, you can always make one inside of a mint tin. Add in a tea light, a crystal, or your favorite rock maybe a little spell or incantation, some incense, you're good to go. Carry around your favorite crystal with you, or this can just be any rock that you found outside that you like. Stir your morning drink with intent, clockwise to invite something in, and counterclockwise to banish. There are a ton of ways to be a broom closet witch, and you are just as valid as every other witch in the world. I love you. Quick tear tip. You feel like people haven't been telling the truth or playing you? Find the fool in your deck. Once you found the fool, pull the two cards before and the two cards after. These cards signify the energy and what you should do in the situation. Let me show you how I make moon water, and probably not in the way that you think. I know we've all been told that if you put your water underneath the moon, it'll become moon water. And while that is not necessarily wrong, I do not use that within my own practice. It just feels a bit too passive for me. And as an animist, someone who believes in animism, I see the moon as having a soul, as a living being and I am there and I am present and I call on her and I ask her to put that energy into the water. Let's talk about warding, what it is, and how to do it. Warding is a type of protection magic that is used to protect a person, place, or object. Now that we know what warding is, I'm going to teach you a couple ways how to ward your house. The first way to ward is to make protection spell jars or protection spell baggies to protect an area. Another way to ward is to place protection crystals around your area or your home. You can draw protection sigils such as pentacles on your windows, doors, and mirrors. You can draw these sigils by dipping your finger in moon water, Florida water, or even lemon juice. You can even ward by using a protection oil and rub it onto something you're trying to protect. 
You can even ward by placing black salt along your windows in the corners of your house and your doors. You can ward by enchanting objects and making them guardians. You can put brooms above and beside your doors to ward. There are many more ways to ward. These are just a couple of them, but just remember to cleanse your space before warding because you can trap that energy in as well. Some of you that are new to tarot ask me, how do I cleanse my tarot deck? One of my favorite ways is to use crystals. Some readers actually place a clear quartz crystal on top of their tarot deck when not in use. The idea is that it cleanses the deck and amplifies the energy of the cards. Me personally, I don't use a clear quartz crystal. I prefer to use an amethyst. It has the same properties of a quartz, plus it enhances psychic senses and intuition. Perfect if you're a beginner. Now, the easiest way to clear your cards, perfect for when you're in a pinch, is to do this. Knock on your deck three times. It clears the energy. Thank you. There are way more broom closet witches than I thought on this app, so here's some more tips for you. Any cooking you do can be magical. Add certain herbs, draw sigils in the oil, stir with intention, whatever. You can use electric wax burners instead of candles, but I don't have one, so here's candle. Cleanse with pre-made or homemade room sprays. Hang up decorations with bells to do some sound cleansing. Mix up salt and herbs for bath or shower rituals. You can make homemade concoctions, or you can just get stuff at the store. Skincare and makeup are both great forms of glamour magic, as well as cleansing. And you can buy shampoo and body wash that already has the right ingredients. Modify your chores to turn them into cleansing rituals. I particularly like sweeping. Make some angsty art as a form of shadow work. Or make an art piece with whatever intention you want. Lightly carve sigils or symbols into tea lights or candles. It's hard to see anyway, but especially if you do it lightly and burn it right away, no one will see it. Mix some charged water into your water bottle. To bond with certain objects or activate spells. Keep them under your pillow, or if you need some extra hiding, put them inside the pillowcase. Grow herbs and other types of plants. Research is super important, but how do you know that your source is reliable? First of all, never assume that a source is good or bad depending on where it comes from. Some social media sources might be really good, some books might be really bad. What matters most is where the information comes from, so always be cross-referencing and making sure that someone has sources to back up their claims. Though I would suggest being extra wary of social media because misinformation can spread like wildfire. If you do find a source that you like, check out its bibliography. This is where the author lists all the sources they used when writing the book, and it's a good place to find new authors and other things that you might be interested in that relate to the same topic. Looking at these is a great way to do a quick cross-reference. Research the authors as well. For example, I really like this specific book by Scott Cunningham, but the rest of his work is very, very Wicca-based, and that's not for me. Make sure your sources are realistic, too. If someone is promising something that's super grand and amazing and doesn't make any sense realistically, that is probably not a source you should keep looking at. Look at things from different time periods, too. Historical context is always really great, and though it can be a little bit dry sometimes, they can be super informational and it's a great way to find the root of where things come from. Let's talk about a method called the tarot quint. It's short for quintessential, like the most important part of your reading, and it'll summarize the cards of your reading with one central theme or final thought to leave you with. First, just perform your reading as normal and analyze the cards as you normally would. All you do now is add up the numbers of the card. If you have a reverse card, you subtract that number. And if you end up with a number larger than 22, add the final numbers together like I do in this example. Look for the number it corresponds to in the majors, and that's your tarot quint. How to start a grimoire. Some people call it a book of shadows, I don't. My grimoire is actually in a leather-bound three-ring binder, and I super recommend this if you are a perfectionist like me, because you can take the pages out, redo them if you don't like them, and reorganize them as you see fit, and struggle to put them back in like this. Grimoires are pretty private, so I won't be showing the exact contents, but I have information about deities, protection, and a couple other quick reference things for me to look at. I also keep information about the holidays in here, the ones that are most relevant to me and why information about shadow work, different methods of doing it, as well as a bunch of prompts, the tarot section with different card associations, same thing with runes, and then a whole bunch of different associations for herbs, crystals, candle magic, how I make sigils, jewelry, different sounds, different types of waters, moon phases, and bones. And I have a separate journal where I write things that happen more on a daily basis.